Welcome back to Monitors Unboxed. It's time to take another look at the Alienware AW3423DWF to see whether Dell has actually fixed this monitor through their latest firmware update. Back in March, I checked out firmware version M3B103, which was supposed to address issues with the HDR1000 mode, but ultimately didn't. And it seems Dell was paying attention because they released another firmware update last week with more promised fixes. This new firmware, released on June 5th, is version M3B104, and it comes with two listed enhancements, improvements to preset HDR1000, and improvements to fan profile to reduce fan noise. Personally, I think the fan noise has been just fine with the previous update, but I guess it's good to see further improvements, but obviously the big update here are those improvements to the HDR1000 mode. Here's a quick recap as to the problems with the DWF and its brightest HDR1000 mode. Like a lot of these QD OLED ultra-wide gaming monitors, there are two main modes that are included. A display HDR true black mode that caps peak brightness to around 450 nits, as well as an HDR peak 1000 mode that extends brightness up to around 1000 nits peak. On the DWF since launch, the true black mode has been reasonably accurate at displaying HDR content, but is obviously limited in brightness, while the 1000 nit mode has been horribly inaccurate with raised brightness across pretty much the entire range, though with the benefit of proper 1000 nit peak brightness, which is advertised as a capability of this product. When looking at the previous firmware update, I noticed that it is possible to improve the less than stellar default experience through a variety of setting tweaks, but these settings had a different impact depending on whether you had an NVIDIA GPU or AMD GPU owing to differences between the FreeSync Premium Pro and non-FreeSync HDR pipelines. Those with NVIDIA GPUs had a greater ability to fix HDR performance, which isn't ideal given the display is advertised to use AMD's tech. I also pointed out that the DWF works differently to most other HDR monitors in that when switching between the True Black and Peak 1000 modes, the change happens instantly. Other monitors, when switching modes, flick to black briefly and establish a new display mode with updated HDR metadata reflective of the display's changed brightness capabilities. Displays that did this tended to be more accurate, while the DWF appeared to apply a simple and inaccurate scale factor to its HDR EOTF curve to enable 1000 nits of performance. Now for the new stuff. I've installed the latest firmware version M3B104 on my AW3423DWF, which thankfully I still have, and the results that I've found after testing are largely good news for owners or prospective buyers. This firmware update has made genuine improvements to the HDR1000 mode, and most of the previous setting tweaks I talked about are no longer required to get a good experience. It's not all positive, but Dell have made big strides to creating the perfect HDR experience with this product, and I'd strongly recommend everyone apply this update. Let's start with NVIDIA GPU owners. Here is what the DWF produced previously on firmware version M3B103 in the HDR1000 mode, testing with a 10% window. We see raised brightness across the entire EOTF range, producing inaccurate results. And this is what we get after firmware M3B104. Much more accurate results and proper tracking of the EOTF curve. This is excellent performance and rivals the best QD OLEDs I've tested, and it's all possible without any setting adjustments. To confirm, this is what the DWF produces now, testing with the 2% window. We can see brightness reaching close to 1000 nits in this mode, but with accurate EOTF tracking. Just what we want to see, and a confirmation that the problems are resolved. This performance is actually more accurate than the previous configuration we showed with setting tweaks, such as reducing the level of contrast and enabling source tone mapping. These tweaks are no longer required at all. The performance shown here from firmware 104 is using default settings with console mode set to on. You don't need to enable source tone mapping anymore. The difference between on and off now is mostly negligible, although leaving the setting off I found to be slightly more accurate. One of the big differences post firmware update is how the modes are handled. Previously, you could enable the HDR1000 mode instantly, and it felt like no significant changes were actually occurring on the display side. Now the HDR1000 mode is a completely different mode. Enabling it turns the display black briefly, and metadata values are updated. The monitor now reports 993 nits of peak brightness in the HDR1000 mode, and 465 nits in the true black mode. 
This allows Windows or other source devices to more accurately handle HDR tracking and is how the monitor should operate if there are two modes that differ in brightness capabilities. The small and basically irrelevant downside is that it now takes a bit longer to switch between modes, but after testing out the two modes in-game you should no longer experience a huge difference in brightness and visual quality. Instead the HDR1000 mode looks basically the same as the true black mode, but with bright highlights extended up to 1000 nits, as it should be. Indeed I was able to confirm the true black mode works the same as in previous updates, which is to say with strong levels of accuracy. For those with AMD GPUs, there is also good news to share, although not as good as on NVIDIA GPUs. EOTF tracking has been improved significantly in the HDR1000 mode, to the point where brightness is no longer raised across the entire range, which makes the mode very usable. Here are the results using a 10% window, and once again we can confirm that performance is good while producing near 1000 nits when testing with a 2% window, so this is a much better experience for AMD GPU owners. Unfortunately, EOTF tracking isn't as strong for AMD GPUs as it is on NVIDIA GPUs, there is still a noticeable difference here that negatively impacts AMD GPUs in the lower part of the luminance range. This is still due to the FreeSync versus non-FreeSync HDR pipelines, with AMD somehow still ending up with a disadvantage. I guess Dell had a few difficulties optimizing this pipeline, though it is still improved. What's interesting is that this performance after the latest firmware update looks pretty similar to what I was able to achieve via setting tweaks on the old firmware. Here you can see a similar EOTF bump in the lower luminance range, the difference being my tweaks reduced brightness substantially to only around 500 nits. After firmware 104 we see similar tracking, but with full 1000 nit capabilities, there is no doubting the new update is an improvement, also because you can achieve this performance without needing to adjust settings, the default experience is just fine. While I would class the AMD GPU experience on the DWF as acceptable, it could be improved further via another firmware update, so hopefully Dell continue to work on it. But at least now, the monitor is very usable on AMD GPUs with full 1000 nit capabilities, which really wasn't the case with the previous firmware as any tweaks to fix the EOTF tracking ended up reducing brightness. Nvidia GPU owners still get the better experience though, which I'm sure will be frustrating to those with an AMD GPU expecting the FreeSync pipeline to be superior. Aside from these improvements to the HDR1000 mode, I didn't spot any other major changes or improvements. If you still want to use the Display HDR True Black mode or the other HDR modes, they perform as they did previously, and I really wouldn't recommend them given their lower brightness. The HDR1000 mode is now the best way to game on the DWF, and especially on NVIDIA GPUs, it is the most accurate. Dell also said the firmware update reduces fan noise, though as I said earlier, this honestly wasn't a problem for me previously, so for all I know, it's just as quiet as it was before. So that's a quick look at the AW3423 DWF's M3B104 firmware update, which I highly recommend all owners download and install. You'll need to hook up your monitor over USB, download the update from Dell's website as an executable file, then run that file to update the display. It takes around 5 to 10 minutes, very easy process. Performance is now much better, and gamers can enjoy the 1000 nit mode as intended and as it probably should have been from the start. This firmware update does change my recommendations for QD OLED ultrawide monitors a bit as well. Now that HDR performance is very similar to the AW3423DW, I see no reason to buy the more expensive DW model over the DWF. The DWF is cheaper, has lower input latency, is much quieter during normal operation, and supports user upgradable firmware, which has just proven itself to be very useful. You'll also experience fewer firmware bugs, at least relative to early DW units. Right now the DWF is priced around $1100 US, though it regularly goes on sale to $1000, which is a great price. The DW is more typically a $1300 product with discounts to $1200. It's a no brainer between these models I think. I'd also choose the DWF over the MSI 342C at the same price, I prefer the Alienware design and performance is now quite similar, plus the Alienware model is typically much easier to find in stock and gets regular discounts to $100 below the MSI. This leaves the Samsung Odyssey OLED G8 as the other contender and I still feel the Samsung model is the best of the lot and is worth buying depending on the price. In the US pricing has actually come down quite a bit lately, from an MSRP of $1500 US to as low as $1100 at some retailers, hopefully that's a permanent price not just a quick promotional deal. 
Best price versus best price, that puts the G8 just $100 more than the DWF, which I feel is justified given the nicer design, zero fan operation, and more powerful processing hardware that allows for a more accurate color experience. But the DWF is certainly still a good buy depending on the price, which of course may differ in your region. Here in Australia, the Alienware is about $100 AUD cheaper as an example. So anyway, that's it for this one. I do really like to see Dell improving their products through firmware updates and that this DWF product has been improved via the latest firmware update. So definitely go and install that on your monitor if you do happen to own this particular display. That's it. If you're interested in supporting our channel and the sort of updates that we do, our investigations, looking at firmware updates and things like that, then please do subscribe to Monitors Unbox and also consider supporting us via our Patreon and Floatplane accounts. Links to those are in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.